Shalom and welcome once again to the Rashi Nash. I'm Pastor Matt. And I'm Kara. Have I ever taken a shortcut that got us lost? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you would I knew you'd be honest. I don't I know. Can't think of one off the top of my head, but I'm, I I it surprised think, me. I think I've probably taken a shortcut that got us lost in the past. One of the things that I love, brothers and sisters, is GPS. I love those apps on our phone that can tell us where to go because I have a very bad sense of direction. I get lost very easily, and even places that I've been to a hundred times, I want to reassure myself by looking at that GPS because I, I, I just I don't naturally have that sense of of direction of where to go. Unfortunately, your daughter inherited that as well. Oh dear, <laughs> it's it's one of those things that some some people have a very good natural sense of direction. I I just simply don't. And the reason that I'm mentioning this is that we are in this week the Torah portion called Beshalach, and in this Torah portion, it starts with this verse. It happened when Pharaoh sent the people. And let's just pause right there. In the Hebrew. God does not tell Moses to tell Pharaoh, let the people go, but rather send them away. That's a different, mm. uh, different connotation there, to send the people away. And last week, as, he, as we were in the Torah portion called Bo, um, we said that that can mean come. You know, he had to come to Pharaoh, but then Pharaoh was also going to tell the people to go, to send them away. It's, it's very interesting. This, uh, the, the language of Hebrew has, has such a richness to it. So when Pharaoh had sent the people away, God did not lead them by the way of the land of the Philistines. And I'm going to say what a lot of modern English translations say right now. He didn't lead them by way of the land of the Philistines, though it was closer. But that's not the best translation from the Hebrew. Um, we really could translate it because it was near. For God said, perhaps the people will reconsider when they see war and they will return to Egypt. What this is saying is when God was leading the people, there was a shorter way to go, but that would go through the land of the Philistines. And there are two ways that we can look at this. Even though it was a shorter route, he had them go around it so that they wouldn't see war and get discouraged. But another way to look at it is the land of the Philistines is closer to Egypt. So God led them in a way that was longer than necessary because if they went through the land of the Philistines, they'll be even closer to Egypt and maybe even more apt to want to go back. This is so interesting to me because sometimes I think that the Lord leads us in a way that is confusing to us. That we say, Lord, we're here and we need to get here. Why are you having us go all the way around? But we need to trust in the fact that God knows what he's doing and that sometimes we need to go the long way around. Sometimes we, there are lessons to be learned by not going through that way. Now, another thing that I'm thinking of with not taking that shortcut is there is a valley in that area of the Philistines where there are, and many people don't know this, but 30 years before the Exodus, you know, the people knew that eventually they were going to be set free from slavery. They knew they were going to come up out of Egypt. And there was one group from one particular tribe that got it wrong. And they thought, it's our job just to leave. And so they actually escaped on their own. But in escaping on their own, they came against the Philistines and they were just wiped out. And their bodies were left in the valley in that, in that battlefield. And that, brothers and sisters, is the valley of dry bones that is talked about uh, in, in uh, the prophets. That is the valley of dry bones. It's not just a metaphor. These were Israelites that left too early. They did not wait on the redemption. They tried to take it in their own hands and do it their own way. And because of that, they were destroyed. That's very sad. So that's another reason God didn't want to take them that way is to, for them to see the evidence that these were our people. These are the people that left. And, and then, of course, they'd be discouraged. Well, what if this happens to us as well? So sometimes I think 
God gives us a promise or gives us a, a plan, and sometimes we don't really know how we're going to get there, and that makes it difficult for us to plan our lives. Yeah. Um, I know for many years, you and I had talked about, you know, we, we know that God is calling us, we believe, to be the, the senior leaders at our church, but we didn't really know how that would come about or when it would come about. And we just had to wait on God's timing and to say, we know this is our destination. We just don't know how we're going to get there or when we're going to get there. So we just need to be ready. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I think it's that way with our, our children as they get older and I'm thinking of our oldest daughter, you know, trying to, to apply for college and, and different things and not knowing exactly, you know, what path she would take. But then when you find out, it's just a matter of getting from here to there. And sometimes the shortcut is not the best way. Sometimes there are lessons to be learned by, by going the long way around. And sometimes we might even get discouraged and think that God is not faithful in fulfilling his promise to us because it hasn't happened quickly. Sometimes we have to be very, very patient. Yeah. I think we see that evidenced in, in our lives in, in lots of different ways where we, we need to wait upon the Lord and to do things according to his timetable and, and not ours. It's very easy to get impatient when we're sort of waiting on those answers in our lives. What do you think about that, about, about the patience needed to, to really wait and see what God has for us rather than just trying to rush in and, and do it ourselves? It's hard. It's absolutely hard. But I also, I feel like we just have to, it's hard to trust, but if we can stop and remind ourselves that God does have a plan and a reason for everything, then we can avoid you know, the heartache and the, and the, and the, the struggle, because, you know, sometimes he doesn't let us take that shortcut because like you said, it's going to take us somewhere where maybe our faith isn't as strong and as developed as it could be if we had stayed the course a little longer and we find ourselves in a situation where now we we may have a crisis of faith, you know what I mean? So like those Egyptians, you know, they, I mean, uh, the Israelites, they had been in, in, cased in the Egyptian culture for so long and they finally feel like they have you know this savior that has come and God has showed these miracles and all this stuff and okay yes okay it's actually you know this is real we're gonna whatever but like we've seen before you know they, they it's it's so shallow still that had they gone that way they they could have you know fallen apart way before um, they ever reached the promised land and so um, God had, God knew what he was doing. And, and it's just sometimes difficult when we see other people being able to take those shortcuts and we're not able to, for whatever reason, that God has given us a different path. And, um, I feel like that's, that's really hard sometimes to say, all right, God, I'm following you. I'm doing what you want me to do. I feel like, you know, I'm doing A, B, and C like I should, and yet I'm watching all these people around me be able to have all the things and do all the things, and I am not in that same situation. And sometimes it's hard to remind yourself, okay, if I feel like my heart's in the right spot and I'm doing what I need to be doing, that there's a reason I don't have those things, or I'm not involved in that program, or I'm not you know, able to do these things with my family or my life or my job or whatever it is, um, if we are knowing that, then we just have to trust that there is absolutely a reason. And it always usually is the case. You, you look back years later and you go, oh, you know, <laughs> you have that moment like clearly if I had been here, then none of this would have happened and vice versa. So it's always hindsight is twenty twenty, as they say. But in the moment, it's hard to focus on God's got a plan and he knows what he's doing. So do you think that we could actually look at God taking us the long way around, if the shortcut is going to cause us harm and pain and make us want to give up, do you think that the long way around is really God's mercy yeah, of sparing absolutely. us from that? So yeah. maybe we should look at that in a different way. Wow. So if you feel like you're taking the long way around and God's promise to you is taking a long time, maybe you should shift your focus and look at that as an act of God's mercy, of him saying, listen, there might be a shorter way, but 
you'll be in danger. And listen, we don't want to turn back to Egypt. That's not what we want. God has a plan. He's trying to lead us to the promised land. And, and so this is uh, what a great lesson for all of us, a great lesson in patience and a great lesson in perspective to change the way we're looking at our situation. Maybe the shortcut isn't worth it if it's going to cause us harm. We pray that this has been a blessing to you and that uh, you'll share this lesson with others. We will see you next time here on the Rashi Nash. Shalom.